Hey everybody, welcome to Tony's Time, DocSports.com. What an exciting week. My sidekick joins me over here, I guess. No, we're over this way, that way. That's Doug, that's Doug Upstone of DocSports.com. And we're talking Major League Baseball. It, uh, it uh, first pitch goes this week. Actually, you've been seeing some preseason game, Doug. We'll bounce off that real quick, but Nonetheless, uh, July 23rd is the start date. You got the jo uh, Dodgers of Kershaw taking on the Giants of Cueto. Dodgers laying a nice 300 number line shot up from seven and a half to eight. And of course, uh, the Yankees and Garrett Cole, about $6,000 a pitch. Is that what it is? Something like that. Anyway, they're taking on the Nationals and uh, Max Scherzer. Uh, Yankees laying a buck 35 totals jumped up in that one from seven to seven and a half in some places as well, Doug. And it's an interesting season here. Um, I took a quote uh, from a, a local uh, sports book here in town uh, that I heard on VEASAN, local sports book manager. I wanted to get your reaction to this. And by the way, hello, Doug. How are you? I'm excellent, Tony. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm fired up. Uh, for uh, the baseball season, obviously. Uh, this was a quote from an odds maker here in town. And we're going to, this is kind of more of a Major League Baseball primer for everybody, you know, because this is going to be a totally different animal than the 162 game season that started in April uh, with the COVID shortened season here. But here was, uh, here was this quote, Doug, and I'll get your reaction. No handicap playbook exists. For the baseball riddle we are about to witness. Bookmakers and betters alike face similar challenges, which are enormous. I think it is an impossible thing to handicap. These guys are structured creatures of habit. They're used to playing 162 games. Are the pitchers going to go three innings or five? You never know when six players are going to be out. If they're going to be calling up minor league players. I think it's a complete mystery. That was the quote I heard on VEASAN. I went ahead and printed it out. Doug, your reaction to what's about to unfold in front of us here starting Thursday? Well, you know what? I, I certainly can't disagree with it. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, the, the, the illness factor um, I, has more of a, I would say, a, a potential psychological impact on a team because, you know, teams have injuries all year. And so basically, a, if a guy gets sick, he's going on the DL. So from that standpoint, you know, now, if does it end up being three or four guys possibly, you know, that that changes things. And if you add that to injuries, so, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with the general principle of that, that there's going to be, it's going to be unique. Uh, that's why I'm not big on futures wagers at this time. I think you're going to be much, be much better off doing it on a game-by-game -game basis, reading something about the games that you're looking to bet, Obviously, like you and I will be will be doing every single day and, you know, and, and just go at it. But like anything, I think there's going to be opportunity and you have to pay attention to the details. And that is going to be the single most important thing is the details, which we'll get into what to potentially look for in some of these instances, Tony. And that's what we're going to talk about. And just to let everybody know, you know, there's a lot of... Uh... Guys in our business that are going to be putting out five or six or seven picks a day and, you know, the super lock of the millennium and all the, uh, the hype and hyperbole that goes along sometimes, unfortunately, in this industry. But if you are not going to, in all seriousness, um, if you're not going to exercise caution, low volume, um, a sit back and wait approach a little bit, at least out of the gate, um, I think you're doing yourself a huge disservice. And I've been saying this for years, um, less is more, and it's the story of the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady is going to win this race, Doug, without question. When it comes to handicapping these games, finding value, looking for serious reasons to take underdogs, don't be laying over a, a buck 50 on the money line. You know, um, those type of um, disciplines when it comes to handicapping this Major League Baseball season, although I use them every season, they're going to be highlighted anymore in my case. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you, Tony. You know, as long, I mean, you've been doing it, well, I believe, what, 28, 29 years, I, I believe right. is what it is. And I know myself, um, the in terms of just say in a, as, as a handicapper, I've been doing it uh, roughly half that time. That doesn't mean that you're old, Tony. It just means that you've been doing it longer, just so we're clear here Thank you. <laughs> on that one. But uh, no, but in all seriousness, the, you know, myself on a regular basis, the first 10 days of any baseball season in the past I've ever done, at best, I've had seven picks total. So I take the same exact approach. <laughs> Uh, looking exclusively for underdogs or just say or favorites that are so overwhelming that you find a you know like a really good run line price on a favorite I think that's the only way to go you know the the only difference though is that literally from day one every game matters I mean we're talking we're playing 60 games in 66 days okay so I mean it's it's get up and go time right from the start yeah. so you have to take that into consideration in terms of easing into it like most teams would that that's out the window this year that's a great point that people need to pay attention to you know sometimes you'll you know, you'll get in the middle of the season and you'll put out say and i don't put out a lot of run lines but say you put out a run line on the yankees and they were playing the pirates and they had, you know, say they have Garrett Cole pitch it against um, uh, a middle of the pack uh, rotation guy for the Pirates, and they're laying three hundred. And they just won the day before, eight to two. This is the second game in the series, and you put out a run line, and you get it down to like minus one forty. You put up three units on it, and either the Yankees win three to two, or they get beat straight up, and they go, Tony, how does that happen? How does that happen? There's no way a team that's batting 189 against left-handers as a team the last 10 games goes up against an ace and lights him up and blah, 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 blah. All the stuff goes along with it. I'll tell you why. Because no single game is that important when there's 162 games. This is not like the NFL where there's 16 games and the difference between nine wins and 10 wins or maybe eight wins and nine wins at the end of the season allows you to get in the postseason. In Major League Baseball, a game here or there, a day off here or there, or a manager starting a Garrett Cole, and after the second inning when he struck out six guys, pulls him for who he's playing, who they have. Maybe they got the Red Sox on deck for his next start on the road. He wants him fresh. He doesn't want him the pitch count high or whatever. Now, Doug, that dynamic is taken out of the equation. And I also think that makes the difference when you are looking at favorites that do have an advantage that are in the 125 to 140 range from time to time, seeing where, where they're at in their schedule, who they have on deck, so on and so forth, and where they are in the standings. I do think that teams will – you'll get more of their A game than you would normally during a regular season. Absolutely, I think that's that's going to be the case. Um, again, what is it? Uh, what college football from a few years ago? Every game matters. You know, I mean, basically that's what we're talking about here. You know, and to you know, let's just say take a little bit of a dive into this, Tony. Uh, one of the things to I think to look out for is teams, the bad teams this year with new managers. Okay, there's a number of them. We got a total of ten man, ten new managers, but some of them like you know. Uh, the Baltimore and, and, and Seattle come to mind. Pittsburgh comes to mind. Uh, those teams, if they get off to a two and eight start, for example, or worse, okay, we already know they're checking out. Okay, they're yeah. going to be questioning why they're even playing. Those teams yeah. are just going to be done because at two and eight, they're going nowhere. Their season was going to be nowhere. You know, you, you to to try and back some of those teams. I'm not going to say they're not going to win. I mean, any one of those teams could win 15 to 20 games, even with a two and eight start. But still, yeah. to try and determine what's going to be a good spot to back those teams, boy, that that's going to take some uh, some real heady skill to be able to uh, point those teams in the direction of trying to find a victory. At least in my opinion. Yeah, let's say you got it. It's like the NBA coming up here on the 30th. You know, you got a team that's in eighth or ninth place. They play, play seven or eight practice games or whatever it is. Then they're right into the postseason. They're playing the number one seed. 
in you know in in the either the east or the west and the first game they get beat 120 to 89 I mean, you know, or whatever. You you got to worry about those players' motivation. It's going to be interesting. I, I'm also I'm going to go ahead and quote Dave Sheriff, and uh, he's a risk manager at CG Technology here in town, and um, he said he discussed uh, his team at CG Technology. They they run seven sports books here in town. Discussed in the risk risk room. We've had various conversations with guys I respect. Sounds like the Sharps are really going to take a wait and see approach to baseball at least in the beginning. In years past, you can see, you know, that they sit out more often than not when there are a lot of interleague matchups, and you're starting out with a lot of interleague matchups when interleague matchups start. So I think a lot of the Sharps, and I would consider myself a Sharp. I've won over 221 units over the past two years documented in baseball and had has some really good years. And I, like you, first 10 days or whatever, if you have six or seven picks, it'd be a miracle. Um, everybody's – there's a difference between being hungry to bet and hungry to win money because which one is it? Because there's a difference between the two folks. You know, hungry to win money means patience is a virtue when it comes to Major League Baseball this year. It's going to be the same thing in the NBA out of the gate. It's going to be the same thing in the NHL out of the gate with these COVID-related scenarios that we're all dealing with, you know. And these are real humans and they're, you know, dealing with, you know, their life, their family, their worry about their safety, all the different things and what to believe when you turn on the television and, you know, the, the whole gamut here. And uh, so although these are millionaire uh, athletes, they're dealing with the same emotions and set of issues that a guy that's, you know, running the counter at 7 is dealing with. Oh, you and I sit here are dealing with. So it's going to be interesting, Doug. I think the emphasis here, I guess, when, when we delve into it here, I read an article that you pinned, and uh, one of the headlines of your articles was pitching, pitching, and more pitching. And uh, your thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, th- there's there's going to be a number of factors coming into it, and there's going to be many factors that are also we have no idea about. And for example, one thing I could see happening, uh, I'll use St. Louis and uh, Atlanta as two good examples. They roughly have six starting pitchers, okay? I'm not saying any of them are all great, but they have that many guys that can start games. So let's just say that in the first 10 games, these guys don't have many innings, they haven't thrown many pitches, you know, since, since they returned to camp uh, in, uh, in July. So with that, I could see, either manager, you start one guy, and especially if, if it's against a team that you feel like you really need to beat in, in the early part of your schedule, why wouldn't you, if you have six pitchers, why wouldn't you use, let's just say your number one pitcher and then your number five pitcher, three innings each, okay? Yeah. Then you get to the back end of your bullpen going forward, which again, should be a strength for your team. And you could do that. You could match then a two with a six and do that again. So you could even do that in back-to-back games if you want to. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to work out, but it, it puts you certainly in a more advantageous position to win. And or if you have, for example, some teams that have deep bullpens, you could even just go with three starters to begin with. And you know, in a particular series, just pitch them three innings and as long as you keep your bullpen fresh or as fresh as possible and not having to use guys in back-to-back games if you can score a few runs tony you're in a much more advantageous position yeah i wonder um if the pitch counts are going to be lower this year for starters before they pull them out than they they were in previous years um in, in a regular season scenario um, I would be a bit surprised to see a lot of managers, um, and with the short schedule you had alluded to, managers will be scrutinized like never before. I agree with that, especially when every game means something now, more so than, you know, the difference between winning 33 or 34 games and 30 games may be the difference if you're in the playoffs. I mean, it, it, it very well may be. Um, as a matter of fact, it would surprise me if it wasn't. You know, even the best teams in baseball, their totals, like the Yankees and the Dodgers, 
you know, around 37 and a half wins, which is just seven and a half games above 500, folks. That gives you an indication of what odds makers are expecting and not stringing themselves out on the futures market, you know, um, and sharp bettors, you know, are the ones that really bet the futures hard and heavy early, and they don't want too much downside on that. But I agree, Doug. Um, but I would not be a bit surprised to see a 50, 60 pitch count from these guys and go directly to bullpen. If you have deep bullpens like, you know, um, let's take the Brewers. Tampa Bay. Yep. Yeah, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Uh, I would not be a bit surprised to see those two teams go to the bullpen very early on pitch counts this year. And, and they also have managers who have a great deal of experience in working those types of bullpens too, which when we talk about managers, you know, that's going to be very advantageous because if, we, if you're used to managing a certain style, you're not going to have to change that much, which puts many of the new managers at a, at a disadvantage, let alone Dusty Baker, <laughs> who is uh, arguably the worst manager ever when it comes to pitching. Um, he has a winning record, I believe, for, for his career, but uh, no one's going to be too excited about what's going to happen there. And I can't wait till Max Scherzer gets either pulled or used too much in a game. That'll be uh, that'll be fun to watch. I thought that number was going to be a little higher with Garrett Cole in 135 right now, opened up at 130. Um, sharp action early, obviously, on the Yankees in that game against the Nats. Um, I think that's probably the best game, obviously, of the opening day um, with the Dodgers. Last time you saw Johnny Cueto, I believe he uh, included a two-inning effort against the Dodgers and was hit uh, for five runs on five hits, you know, as he had a shortened season last year. And he's probably at a disadvantage against Clayton Kershaw. And that number's probably warranted. Although, um, I guess my next question would be quickly, your thoughts on totals out of the gate. You think you're going to see a lot of low-scoring games? You think you're going to see a lot of high-scoring games? I, I, I well, from from the from the standpoint, I think we'll see more higher-scoring games. But I think from a betting standpoint, it'll have absolutely no impact whatsoever in terms of it being advantageous to betters. Because uh, the best example I can give you is a few years ago when the NHL opened up the game more. And the, the season started at every game was roughly five or five and a half. And, every, and literally, I think every game, but virtually every game, the final score was at least four to three, if not higher. It took three days for the odds makers to adjust. So what appeared to be a great advantage was wiped out immediately. And I think the same exact thing will occur here. I think we'll get through the weekend. Uh, the opening weekend of baseball. And if there's some position that is either teams are going high or low, that will be quickly negated. And, you know, they're just going to do, they're either going to go up or down based on what they're saying. So, so I, I don't think it's a big deal. I get my basic point. Yeah. You know, I, again, folks, you know, uh, docsports.com, by the way, right there, that good looking guy, um, we got a free 60 bucks for you. Get hooked up. Um, I've got a discount on Major League Baseball right now um, on a promo code, um, and it's posted on my uh, profile page over there at Docs. Be sure to take advantage of that. Get 10% off uh, my season pass, which is already discounted half because of the, the COVID-shortened season, and there'll be specials for all the handicappers. If you want a special with Doug, Upstone, if it's no one not posted, call customer service. We don't have silver tongue devils. We have guys that take care of customers and make sure they're treated right, which is unique in the industry, I might add. But nonetheless, uh, be sure and uh, take advantage of that free 60 bucks. And I guess um, at least if you're prudent, again, you want to bet games or do you want to win money? If you want to win money, you're going to have to sit back and watch how this unfolds in order to be responsible, in my opinion, you know, Doug, and I think less is going to be more out of the gate and to observe what you're seeing. And there's going to be trends develop. I've always said this, Doug, and I'm sure you agree with me. Baseball, NBA, daily sports like that, college basketball, a lot of times they play two or three games a week, uh, NHL as well, WNBA. Sports are cyclical. They go in cycles. 
and I always handicap in the middle of the season or a third of the way through the season, I never look at season stats. I look at right here, right now, last three to five games because teams, teams get into cycles. They get into good cycles, and they also get into bad cycles, into ruts, for whatever, whatever the reason might be. And you have to assess that as a handicapper. And I think that's really what we're going to – I think we're going to see shorter cycles this year, but there's going to be a lot of different things that are trending this year in Major League Baseball that you have to pay more attention to and react quicker than you would in a 162-game season. I, I agree with you 100%, Tony, on that. The uh, m Myself, I stick to the, I, I go on a five to seven game cycle, you know, because I my thinking is I like to look at a couple series at a time. And so, uh, you know, baseball, because it's the uniqueness of playing every single day and you have a different starting pitcher every single day, that's what makes it in, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people say, you know, it's the easiest way to make money. And in a lot of cases it can be, but you have to be dialed in and you have to follow as what you're saying, Tony, you have to follow what's going on. And so if a team, for example, let's just say, okay, the Dodgers and San Francisco are going to play four games to start the year against each other. Say San Francisco's just has, has, no way to stop the, the Dodgers offense, which will they, that will not be the only team that would be the case this year, by the way. Uh, Dodgers offense with the DH, <laughs> yikes. Um, they're going to score some runs. So that being the case, if, if the San Francisco has to use multiple guys, even on the first weekend, first four game series, if they have to use some bullpen guys two or three times in inning or more, especially now with some of the changes where a guy comes in, he's got to throw to at least three batters. I mean, they're going to go in that next series and they're going to be at a potentially big disadvantage right away. And those that's something to look for. And it's going to be every series to look for that because that can give you an edge in that first game of a new series going forward in any situation. Yeah, folks. And I'll tell you what right now, when I handicap a baseball game and I've been highly successful at it, especially the last couple of years over at Doc's, um, then I'm just stating facts here. I'll handicap a game, but when I watch that game, I'm handicapping the next game these two are going to play based on what I'm watching during the game I already handicapped and bet. So and much to what Doug is saying, you know, and of course, you know, odds makers react to that as well, and you have to combat that a little bit. Maybe I look more of it at a totals angle or a first five innings angle or whatever it is, there's more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to handicap in Major League Baseball, and you're going to have to figure it out this year. And putting some experience to work for you is going to help. Uh, Doug, I know uh, we're running long here. Just just some words of advice as a Major League Baseball primer to everybody out there. DocSports.com is where it needs to be. Doug, I, I'll just do this, and you can do it in short form. When you look at the futures, it's the Dodgers and the Yankees to get to the World Series or the odds on favorite. I probably would be, I wouldn't be shocked, but I would be somewhat surprised if both those teams didn't get in there. But uh, uh, AL and NL long shot for everybody. Sure. The uh, I, My first one, and this, this might even raise your eyebrows, is the Chicago Cubs. And the reason I say it, their starting pitching certainly isn't isn't great, but their they, their core players are all in the prime of their careers, and they got a new manager. Now that could be a disadvantage, but they got a manager that all these guys respect in Ross, David Ross, who in, for yeah. many of them was their teammate when they won the World Series. I think that's going to be positive. With just 60 games, I can see the Cubs getting into the playoffs. I think they're a decent long shot on that one in the American League. Tampa Bay is already a good team, and now they have more offense than they've ever had. They signed a couple of players, so their offense is be as good as it's been in years. And with their pitching, I think they're an interesting team, and I, I think they're a better version of the Cubs. So Tampa Bay would be the other one I would take a look at, Tony. Yeah, Tampa Bay uh, right now uh, for the World Series, plus 1,800, and the Cubs at plus 2,800. I got a couple of long shots for you to watch out for, and they're going to make some noise this season, regardless where they get there or not. That's the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago White Sox, especially the Chicago White Sox, especially in the division they're in. Um, they're going to rack up some wins. That was the season win total overplay for everybody. If you watched any of the videos on this page, he's Doug Upstone. 
I'm Tony George. That's DocSports.com right up there. We got a free 60 bucks for you. Get hooked up for baseball. Quit messing around. Don't stand on the sidelines. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Baseball is here. A couple of good guys at baseball. And be sure and tune in every Wednesday to Tony's Time as our weekly golf feature. Uh, we do a breakdown of the tournament, give you some picks. I went undefeated last week with my premium plays, and one of my long shots cashed in the top 10. And, Doug, I can't remember how you did on that. But um, I really I can't remember what we had. It's it, five days removed from it. I've completely forgot. But at the end of the day, this is this is worth tuning into each and every week with this week's PGA Breakdown. Uh, Going to be a good tournament this week, so be sure and tune in on Wednesdays for that on Tony's time. And uh, get your get your butts over to DocSports.com. Take advantage of the free 60 bucks. Check out the website. Ton of free information and Major League Baseball articles. NBA, WNBA, NHL around the corner. Golf, Korean baseball, horse racing. What else we got? MMA, UFC. NASCAR, all over at Docs. We got you covered. Thanks for tuning in.